easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Come on church, I want to invite you to sing along with me this song over our country and also over our homes. Come on now. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Now we're 
have seen you face to face My moment of love now will never be the same Holy Spirit have your way Like a river flow in me Holy Spirit come saturate If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your moving right now you are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus your voice is calling me out right now I know you're able my God come true again you can do
to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Are you considering water baptism and are keen to know more? Romans 6 verse 4 encapsulates our new life upon baptism. Is it an act of obedience? A public declaration of my faith? What about my past sins and relationship with Jesus? Join us if you'd like to be water baptized or wish to know more about it. Let's continue to build and keep our prayer altars strong. Join us as we come together for our upcoming 24-hour prayer altars. Details will be shown on the screen. Psalm 23.5 reads, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Come and join us as our speaker expounds more on this verse during our upcoming Healing and Miracle Night session. 
As the years go by, how do we keep our passion burning? How do we utilize our years of life skills and leave a meaningful legacy that glorifies God? Join our upcoming Golden Eagle session as Dr. Chiu Wing Yu shares from his experience and how he keeps his fire burning within him. Children are precious gifts from the Lord and it's such a blessing to be able to be fruitful and multiply. Our child dedication session will be happening soon and we invite you to dedicate your child to the Lord. Register now via the link on the screen. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hello, hello and welcome to SIBKL. I'm Pastor Jeffrey, one of the pastors here in the church. It's so good to see so many of you here uh, meeting physically despite the long holiday weekend and even for those who are online, uh, welcome to this third service. So can I have a show of hands, how many of you, this is your very first time meeting here physically in the church? Can you give me a wave? Your first time here in SIBKL. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome brother. Anyone else up in the balcony? First time here in SIBKL? Yeah, I see your hand. Welcome to SIBKL. So after the service, please don't rush off. We would like to get to know you better. There is a connect counter outside. So if you came with a friend, uh, let your friend take you out to the connect counter. We would like to get to know you better and give you uh, a souvenir for your visit here. So for those who are online, uh, you can see uh, a tiny.cc link on screen. Uh, do click on the link uh, and tell us where you are uh, watching online from and we'd like to get to know you better. So today we are in for a special treat uh, because we have Pastor Isaac who will be preaching three chapters. Yeah, three chapters from the book of Deuteronomy and we are in for a feast. Okay, I only have one announcement to make and that is Children Ministry. Third floor, Children Ministry at 11 a.m. You just bring your children and they will have a wonderful time worshipping the Lord. So can we arise even as we commit this time to the Lord in prayer? Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's prepare our hearts for worship that even as we come into the presence of God, may we usher in His presence. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank You, Lord, that truly one day in Your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. And even as we come into Your holy presence, we truly want to lift up the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that You help us to focus and gaze upon you 
and remember you for what you have done for each one of us. Let us cast away whatever worries, whatever thoughts that are in our minds and help us to just gaze upon Jesus that even as we lift the name of Jesus, I pray, O Lord, that you lift each one of us to the rock that is higher than us. So I pray, O Lord, that truly, even as we raise the name of Jesus and give Him praise, may you fill this place with your glory and with your presence, even as we bring this worship to you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Let us praise Jesus. Amen, amen, that's a big deal. Let's get ready to worship God in this place, amen. We're going to give Him some praise in this house. We're going to worship Him with our voice, with our singing. And we're going to worship Him with our actions, alright. So come on, let's put our hands together. And what we're going to do is we're going to dance as well later, alright. Come on, let's worship our King. Come let us worship our King Come let us bow at His feet Cause He has done great things See what our Savior has done See what our Savior has done See how His love overcomes He has done great things Come on! He has done great things Oh hero, oh hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great. We dance, we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great. Every hand lifted high, every feet start to move. You've been faithful to every storm. Let's declare this. You'll be faithful forevermore. Because you have done. You have done great things. And we know. And I know you will do it. Do great things in this place. God, you do great things. Oh, here we are. You can't get the way. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, if you have done great things. We dance in your freedom. Oh, wait. Give him a hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Above it all. Hallelujah, God. Unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God. Above it all. Hallelujah, God. Unshakable.
you do great things because you are a great God, an awesome God, a mighty working God. God above mountains, God in the valleys, you are great. Church, do you know that the meaning of the word worship, it comes from the word worth, worship, ascribing worth to our King. And that's what we're going to do in this place for our great God. We're going to give Him all the praise. We're going to give Him all the glory. We're going to welcome Him. We're going to celebrate Him. And we will run to Him, our rock, our fortress, and our dwelling place. We're going to sing this. Sing this as a declaration of our love for our God.
we see here, it's a foretaste of what we're going to sing in heaven. We love you. And you love us. That's the crazy thing. It's the beautiful thing. You love us. Thank you. Thank you. It's a privilege to love you.
can ever pluck us out from your hand because we are safe and secure in your love. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to love because you first love us. We thank you, Lord, that there is no fear because perfect love casts out all fears. And I pray that even this morning, even as we sit at your feet, May we come to a realization of your love for each one of us. We thank you, Lord, that truly the manifestation of your love was when you gave your one and only Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life so let us come to this realization and even as we declare and even as we have sung i love you lord may we truly mean the words that we have sung and may we truly know deep in our hearts lord that you love us and each one of us we are called the beloved of the lord so my brothers and sisters you are the beloved of the Lord. God loves you. And there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So this morning, even as under the spirit of worship, I pray if any one of you, you are under the spirit of depression, you want healing even in your hearts and even in your spirit, man, and whatever ailment that you are having in your bodies right now, can I ask you to just raise your hands and I will pray for you. Anyone? Hallelujah. I see these hands being raised. Father God, you see these hands being raised to you. You know their needs, Lord. And I pray in Jesus' name that you will meet them at their point of need. I pray that if they are facing depression, I pray that the peace that passes all understanding will guard their hearts and their mind in Christ Jesus. 
I pray that the shalom of Jesus will rest upon them. And whatever ailment, whatever sickness that they have in their bodies, in Jesus' name, I speak healing to them right now in Jesus' name. I pray from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, they will be made whole in Jesus' name. I speak healing to them right now in Jesus' name. And I pray truly, O Lord, in the days ahead, may you remind them of your love for each one of them, that they will know and know in their hearts that you are God who is love, because, because God is love. Hallelujah. We thank you. We bless you, Lord. And now let us turn our eyes to the screen, even as we commit uh, these two persons to Jesus even for healing hallelujah Father God we want to pray for Janice we pray a lot that even as she has fibroid and she's having insomnia I pray in Jesus name that you will set Janice free Lord even from this ailment I pray for brother Alex that even as he's having flu and weak lungs I pray a lot that the function of his lungs will be restored to Lord and I speak healing even to this brother and to this sister in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Please take your seats even as I invite Pastor Isaac to bring us the message. Thank you, worship team. Yeah. Hello. A very good morning to every single one of you on site and online. Give me a short wave. If you're alive in this place, give me a short wave. So good to see all of you. Thank you so much uh, uh, for being here and for everyone who is bringing everything that needs to be brought on stage. So obviously there is a little bit of a prop situation going on today, but I am very honored to bring the Word of God that we're gonna continue um, Deuteronomy series this week. How many of us really enjoyed Mother's Day service last week? You enjoyed, it's brilliant, right? Oh, so good, so, so, so thankful for every single one of you here. Now, just a quick survey, quick survey. Mothers only, mothers only. How many of you loved the Mother's Day gift? You loved it. Give me a cheer, give me a cheer. All right, you loved it, it's good, right? It's good, yeah, it's so good, you know. Um, just, just don't tell my wife uh, uh, that I may be using one or two of the, the mask uh, uh, um, uh, because it's just that good, right? Uh, so I, I loved it so much. I'm not, I, just stay tuned for Father's Day. I guarantee you we're not giving the mask, but it will be something equivalently good, right? All right, so come for Father's Day. It's going to be amazing. You know, uh, I have the honor to continue the Deuteronomy series, and we've been so blessed. At least I've been so blessed so far. You know, yesterday, Pastor Fergus preached uh, uh, something amazing. Uh, he really spoke to me. So he's, he's, just imagine this whole weekend like a part one, part two thing. He's part one, and I'm part two. Uh, so I'm diving into the golden calf story. He gave a brief overview of it. Israel's stubbornness. Is that okay? So catch his, catch his sermon because he brings five points on how our stubbornness leads us to rebellion. I'm going to start with a word of prayer and then we're going to read scripture. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your word this morning. Father God, impress upon my heart what you want to say. Impress upon your heart what you want to tell your people. We are your people and we submit to you, Father God. Oh, Lord Jesus, these are your words not ours. These are your commandments. These are your divine, not ours. So we submit to you. We love you. We honor you. And we invite you here into our hearts this morning. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, I entitled my sermon this morning, Noise in the Silence. There is a noise in the silence. And yes, it is true. I'm, I'm referencing three main chapters of the book of Deuteronomy. It's a very familiar story, but I hope that we're going to pay attention nonetheless. I hope that we're going to get something out of a very familiar story nonetheless. Let's read from Scripture. Scripture is going to come up. Or I'm going to read it here. There we go. Thank you so much, uh, media team. Deuteronomy 9, 9 to 18. So I'm just going to pick a few uh, uh, from Deuteronomy 9 and, and 10. And 11 is a continuation of, of chapter 10. And I'm going to read and then I'm going to narrate a little bit whilst I read. Deuteronomy 9, 9 to 18. When I, who is I? Moses. When Moses, I, went up on the mountain, which mountain? Mount Sinai, to receive the tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant that the Lord had made with you. Who's you? Israel. 
I stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. I ate no bread and drank no water. Just so you know, this is symbolism for he ate nothing, okay? So don't question text and say, did you eat lamb? Or did you have fish, all right? Since it's only no bread, no water. This is just Jewish symbolism for he ate and drank nothing. Is that okay? All right. The Lord gave me two stone tablets inscribed by the finger of God. On them were all the commandments the Lord proclaimed to you on the mountain out of the fire on the day of the assembly. At the end of the 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord gave me the two stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant. Then the Lord told me, go down from here at once because your people whom you brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have turned quickly from what I commanded them and have made an idol for themselves. I'm just going to quick pause here. Watch how the Lord calls Israel. He doesn't call Israel my people. He says, Moses, because your people whom you brought out. I just want to, just quick pause. The moment we stop worshipping God and start worshipping something else, God, you, we automatically put a barrier between us and God. And God cannot say, you are my people, you are, I'm yours, forever yours, because that thing stands in between us and God. And here, God is so clear. God says, your people that you brought out of Egypt, all right? So there is already a barrier, a distance between us and God. Verse 13, and the Lord said to me, I have seen this people and they are a stiff-necked people indeed. I'm gonna take a very short break from Deuteronomy because I really like the Exodus. Read the Exodus story. There is a little small uh, insert in the story. It goes like this, Exodus 32, 17, 18. So when Moses was going down, God says, go down, your people is rebelling against me. When Joshua, which means that Joshua was with Moses, when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, there is the sound of war in the camp. Moses replied, it is not the sound of victory, it is not the sound of defeat, it is the sound of singing that I hear. This is where I draw the inspiration from my sermon. What is the noise in the silent? 14, back to Deuteronomy. Let me alone, God said, so that I, God, may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make you, Moses, into a nation stronger and more numerous than they. So I turned, Moses turned, and went down the mountain while it was ablaze with fire, and the two, stone, two, two tablets of the covenant were in my hands. When I looked, I saw that you had sinned against the Lord your God. You had made for yourself an idol cast in the shape of a calf, a cow. You had turned aside quickly from the way that the Lord had commanded you. So I took the two tablets and threw them out of my hands, breaking them to pieces before your eyes. Then once again, I fell prostrate before the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. I fast forward to Deuteronomy 10. At that time, after Moses fell prostrate before God 40 days, 40 nights, at that time, the Lord said to Moses, chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones and come up to me on the mountain. Also make a wooden ark. I will write on the tablets the word that were on the first tablets which you broke. Very interesting. God again says, which, by the way, Moses, you broke. I didn't ask you to break it. Then you are to put them in the ark. So I made the ark out of acacia wood and chiseled out two stone tablets like the first ones and I went up on the mountain with the two tablets in my hand. Final slide, I think. No, two more slides. The Lord wrote on these tablets what he had written before, the 10 commandments he had proclaimed to you on the mountain, out of the fire, on the day of the assembly, and the Lord gave them to me. Then I came back down the mountain and put the tablets in the ark I had made as the Lord commanded me and they are there now. And now, Israel, and now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I'm giving you today for your own good. Amen. Good scripture. There are two things on stage, to my right and to my left. As we go through the story, I want you to know that this represents Mount Sinai, all right? And obviously this smaller table here would represent the Israelites and the golden calf. 
So I'm going to draw a bit of a reference. So as I point and I stand here, you know I'm Moses on Mount Sinai, or at least playing Moses. If I stand here, you know that I'm playing the Israelites worshipping the golden calf. And if I stand right in the middle, I am now Pastor Isaac Ling trying to narrate the both, both stories. Is that okay? All right? So I'm going to continue by saying this. There is a noise in the silence. There is a noise in the silence. As we live our life, no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, no matter how length your life would be, there will always be noise that will speak to you. And you're going to have to ask yourself, what is the sound of this noise? Just like Joshua and Moses asked, what is the sound I hear? Joshua thought it was the sound of war. Now, if you read the Joshua narrative, you will say, oh, of course Joshua thinks it's war because he's a warrior. He's a militant. He, what he hears is war. What is Moses? Moses is a worship guy. Moses hears singing. Moses heard worship. What do you hear? As I preach the sermon, I want to ask you, what do you hear? In all the things that is going around the world, what do you hear? Because in Let's just assume there are 50 things in the world screaming out for your attention. We're not going to listen to 50 things, but there will always be five out of the 50 that would catch the attention of our hearts, that would catch the attention of our minds. For example, for example, is that okay? For example, what, what do you think is the noise of the world that speaks to us? What do you hear? The first and primest example, our work. Now, I understand that this computer does not generically represent all types of work in the world today. I know some of our work does not involve digital at all, but for the sake of being generic, this represents work. How does your work speak to you? Does your work speak to you loud? Can you say no to you? Do you draw boundaries? How, how, how do you say yes to God, no to work? When work says you've got to work till 9.30 at night, but your cell group starts at 8 o'clock. When work says you've got to work on Saturday, but you know you've got to serve church because you committed to go into the community on Saturday morning, but, you, but work says you've got to work. How do you draw that fine distinction between work and God? Isn't it really difficult for most of us, especially in the last two years? Work has been on the top of our list. What's next? What's next? Okay. What's next? I've got this. This is the best I have, all right? <laughs> this is the best representation of what I have. Like, if you don't know what this is, go, go get married and then do what married people do, okay? All right? So we all know what this is. Now, my kids are obviously still wearing this. Is that okay? So some of your kids are no longer wearing this, all right? Some of your kids are, of course, wearing grown-up pants and everything. But this is just a representation of children. Children, by the way, can also be a noise to our lives. Not a noise in a bad way, but sometimes we can make the noise in a bad way, right? I really love what, you know, something that has stuck on me for the last one week. This is why we come to church and we hear the sermons, right? I really love what Pastor Lindy shared. Where's Pastor Lindy? I saw her somewhere. Oh, there. I really love what Pastor Lindy shared last week. She said something that caught my attention and it hasn't left me since. You know, we don't say to our children, do you want to go to school? Do, do, do you want to go for piano classes? Are you, are you feeling in the mood? for afternoon extra tuition? Are you feeling, in, we don't. We just say school is compulsory. Whatever tuition I want you to take is compulsory, full stop. But more often than not, we say it's over. Do you want to go to church? Church is optional for us. Maybe Bible study is optional for us. Maybe praying at home as a family is optional for us. And when it becomes optional, the noise of our next generation becomes our worship. We go, what do you want? No longer what? God wants. It becomes, what do you want? And we will then kowtow, well, to a diaper. <laughs> I want to say, the only time where we can actually kowtow to a diaper is, is when it's soiled. Is that okay? It's when there is dump and when there is we in it, then it's the only time that we can, well, we should drop whatever we're doing and clean up the diaper. But that's kind of the only time. But that's the question I want to ask. Are we kowtowing to a diaper? Another thing I want to bring up is this. Now, this is a representation of food. 
I don't know if I want to, I, I'm still debating, should I give this away today? Do you want to eat this? So whoever, we have Poise is like, yes, I want one. All right, maybe she, she'll get it later. But this has been sitting um, on my desk since, uh, since Christmas, right? This is, <laughs> thanks Poise, you may have it. Um, um, this is just a generic representation. I was asking my wife, what, I, wanna, I wanna show people what food is. And she's like, oh, we've got children, we've got plenty of food. I'm like, well, there's children's food. So this is the only adult food that I can bring that, that does not uh, perish in my bag, right? But yes, don't you think our appetites for food speaks way louder than God sometimes? Don't you think? Like how many of us can safely, safely, safely say, we wanna be Moses? 40 days, 40 nights, no bread, no water, means nothing. How many of us can, you know, I was just talking to my Kim last night. I was like, wow, you know, respect to this guy called Moses. I don't think I can, he, he did not just 40, he did 80 days of fast and pray. He did 80 days, no food, no water. That's Moses. But for us, how many of us have allowed our appetite to control us. Now, I, I, this, the reason why this is not open since Christmas is because I'm not the biggest chocolate person, but I guarantee you, if you give me a box of sweets and the sweets that I really like, it will be gone in a day, all right? Gone in 60 seconds. So that is me. So I know what kind of food that would make me lose control, that would make me hear the noise. What about, what about you guys? All right, so I'm gonna bring up one more. I'm, I'm, I, I got a point to make, don't worry. I'm gonna pick a lot of props because I've got a, prop to, I've got a point to make. But what about fashion? <laughs> All right? What about, like, this is definitely Kim's idea, okay? I wanted to bring a jacket, but she's like, no, a glasses will look cool, and I'm like, all right, I'll try, all right? What about fashion? Don't you think fashion speaks to a lot of us? I don't know about you, I don't know about you. Now, trust me when I tell you this, I'm not a fashionable guy. Before I met my wife, trust me when I tell you, all I wear is SIBKL t-shirts, and I still do, by the way, because it's, it's free. Thank you so much, Office, for giving me SIBKL t-shirts. And I just wear jeans for the, next, for the last five years until it's torn, and then I buy a new one. That's me. I'm not a fashionable guy. But until my, this is my wife, my wife, my wife, my wife, my wife. All right, so thanks to my wife, I look decent, okay? I look presentable, all right? Decent enough to stand up here. Um, but the point is this, how many of us, the noise of fashion speaks louder than anything else? That in the last two years, if you scroll through your social media, all you see is Balenciaga, right? When is the next Omega and Swatch um, opening and launching in Malaysia? How many of us went to the Omega and Swatch launch? Hallelujah, you're a holy church. This is a holy church. I knew it. This is a good church. Some of you are like, what? What is happening? Right? Just so you know, there's an Omega and Swatch launch in Malaysia and Singapore, and the queue was so long. The queue was an amazingly long, and I was like, oh, one day maybe that would be the queue to enter SIBKL. Who knows, right? Who knows? There you go. Amen. Amen. The idea of fashion. But what else? Of course, we cannot forget the noise of cash. Now, I, I'm giving away the chocolate, but I'm not too sure about this one, all right? This one I'm keeping for myself. I'm just, a, just a prop today. Do you know, this speaks louder than all of this. This speaks louder than everything we can. Everybody wants this. You know, lately, I just read there are seven trillion US dollars was wiped out of the stock market throughout the world in the last one week or so. Seven trillion, it's not even seven million, not even seven billion, seven trillion, and everybody's panicking, right? If you bought Terra Luna cryptocurrency, you're panicking right now, we'll pray for you, don't worry, all right? Don't, don't, don't panic too much, we'll pray. If you don't know what, I, you, you have no idea what I'm talking about, praise the Lord, you're from the holy generation. That's all right, that's okay, all right? Everybody's panicking, what is going on in the crypto world? What is going on in, 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 the, in the money world? Inflation is coming up, then there is, oh, there's so many new words for inflation right now, I'm not gonna talk about it, but this, the noise of money, really keeps us centered to our phones. What is the latest? Who is buying Twitter? All right, who is not buying Twitter? <laughs> is he buying Twitter now? Is he not buying Twitter now? Is it 44 billion? Is it not 44? Everybody is on your phones. What is the next stock should buy? What is the next investment I need to have? Right, it speaks so loud to us. Now, besides, I only have one more, or maybe two more, this. This is, uh, this is just generic book, all right? So don't worry about what is, this is obviously Stephen Covey. This is a good book to read, okay? So I'm not against the book, but I'm just using a book, Knowledge. Some of us, intellect and knowledge speaks to us loud. It's noise. So much so that in the last two years, a lot of us has begun to ask, what is truth? 
What is truth? And where do we get our knowledge from? Which WhatsApp forwards are you reading now these days? Which Facebook share are you reading now these days? They would draw your knowledge into either far left or far right, and everybody's arguing which is the truth, which is not the truth, what is the truth? And God is trying to say, hey, 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 I am the truth and the life, capital T, capital L. Don't worry about getting all the knowledge in the world when you haven't even started from square one. Truth, what is your noise in the silence? You know, if I ask you, if, if, so don't do it, if I ask you to be silent for five minutes, silence, absolutely silent, what is the noise in your head speaking to you? I'm telling you, let me, let me just role play, all right? I'll move on, but let me just role play. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm truth to myself and I'm silent for, the, for five minutes, I guarantee you the first 30 seconds or one minute will be this. When is this sermon going to end? Because it's either I have to pick my children at the third floor or I have to jam getting out, all right? Then we've got to figure out where we're going for lunch, what are we eating for lunch, all right? It's going to, these are the noise that will come into your head. Then I want to go, okay, I want to have Western for lunch, but I can't eat too much because then I'll sleep in the afternoon, then I'll put on some weight, then I want to eat, oh, then what do I have for dinner? What, oh, tomorrow's a holiday, so actually what do we do tomorrow? Let's go for this place. No, I can't because there's going to be a jam, all right? So I don't, let's not go outside of Klang Valley. Let's stay inside Klang. All this, once you have cleared all the BAUs, the business as usual, then you go, okay, what is work next week going to be like, all right? What is my son's school schedule going to be like for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? And then you go through the business motion and everything clouds. And then God says, there, if, if this is not your noise, then this is still your noise. That it's so hard for us to cut out the noise when God asks us to be silent. You see, if, the, if we silence the voice, of God. When we silence the voice, we empower the noise. If we silence the voice, we will always empower the noise. And the noise will be what drives us. The noise will be what we believe. The noise will be our values. The noise will be our life. The noise will be our next generation. The noise will rule over us. And now you can sort of understand why the Israelites built a golden calf, because they silence the voice. Or, if you want to go deeper, they don't know how to hear the voice because all they hear is Moses. They only know how to listen to Moses and not God. So when Moses was not around, they go, I'm lost, I'm lost. I empower the noise. To them, the noise is a golden calf. What is your noise? What is your noise today? It's not just the Israelites. Moses was on Mount Sinai. He held the two tablets of the covenant. I was going to bring a spoiled actual iPad tablet to prove and throw it on the ground, but then, um, no, okay? Um, I couldn't find one, that's just the truth, all right? Moses was on Mount Sinai, he's got a two tablets. Now he started walking down. Now how many of you, you know, if you, if you do jogging, trekking, hiking, you would know that it takes time to walk down the mountain. It also takes time to walk down after you've fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. It takes double or triple the time because it's probably weak, you know, you, you need help. And look, Moses was not young, so he'd probably take another double the time to come down the mountain. Halfway down the mountain, his aide, his, his next gen, his empowered leader, Joshua says, I hear a noise. I hear a noise in the camp of the Israelites. I hear a noise. I think it's the sound of war. And Moses says, no, 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 no. It's not the sound of defeat. Neither is it a sound of victory, it is a sound of singing that I hear. So when he starts walking down, picture this with me. You're halfway down the mountain, you're holding tablets, you could hear noise. God just told you that the people are rebelling. So I know, as I'm Moses, I know the people are rebelling, I hear noise, it's not war, it's not defeat, it's not victory, it's singing, so it has to be worship, right? But, but people are rebelling, which means it cannot be worship of Yahweh, it has to be worship of something else. So I'm walking down, I'm walking down, maybe it takes me 10 days, maybe it took me uh, uh, five days to walk down the mountain, but the, whatever the time duration is, this is my interpretation. If I'm Moses, I burn with holy anger. The more I walk, the more step I take, I burn with holy anger. I want you to picture this, right? For example, the closest example I can relate to is my own life. 
when I'm in the living room and my son runs off and he opens his own room and sometimes there's toys and he wants to climb the cupboards and everything, he's in, he's in the room there and I can hear him climbing the cupboards, all right, and trying to take something on top. I can hear him and I go, what are you doing? No answer. Stop doing it. No answer. And every step I take towards the room and every noise I hear that comes out of the room, I burn with more and more anger and the, the Christian pastor side of me just cease to exist. All right, the moment I step in front of that room, all that takes over is the carnal Isaac Ling and I would scold him, right? Moses is the same. The, God, the holy Moses that is in the presence of God on top of Mount Sinai, the more he walked down, the more he hear, the more he knows they're in rebellion, the holy anger, he silenced the voice, he empowered the noise. And when Moses empowered the noise, the only holy anger he knows what to do is he took the tablets and he threw it. I don't know if he threw it with the intention of hurting somebody, but he threw the tablets. So it's not just Israelites, it's also Moses. When you silence the voice, when you say, God, you're in my background. God, I... Shh. There is something else that would always speak to you. So when Moses threw the tablets, when you break what is sacred, you make what is common all the time. When you break what is sacred in your life, you will make what is common common to the world. When you break, that is what is sacred. When you break the cycle of coming to church on site every weekend, whether Saturday or Sunday, when you break your rhythm of cell group, when you break your, your personal prayer time, your Bible study time, when you break that rhythm, that divine, that sacred, you will always fill it with what is common. Don't you think? Don't you think? When you watch, when we all watch church online, back in the MCO. Don't you think we, our WhatsApp would ping, right? Where's my phone? I was going to put my phone here. There we go. That's my phone. I was going to, don't you think our WhatsApp would ping during sermon? Ping. Mom says, are you coming over for lunch? Ping, <laughs> right? Your school teacher says, uh, I need to talk to you about your son. A ping. Your boss says, have you handed in your, 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 your to-do list or whatever it is? Ping. Your bank says, insufficient funds. <laughs> right? Whatever it is. And or, if you're, you're from the next gen, my age and below, ping! Right? This celebrity is, this is this, ping! Johnny Depp is suing Amber Heard. <laughs> ping! Right? Amber Heard is bringing her sister to trial to testify against Johnny Depp. A ping! Right? Everything comes up, right? Sports or fashion or celebrity comes up, or ping! All right? A song comes up, I see you looking at my P-I-C. If you, if you know, you know, right? Zoom in. Zoom out. Okay. Zoom in. Zoom out. Okay. You know. If you know, you know. Bing! The latest trend, the latest hashtag comes up, right? Come on. Body want to wiggle, wiggle. Come. Okay. All right. I've got to, I'm going to move on. If you know, you know. If you don't, it's okay. You're the holy generation. Think about that, all right? That's okay. The point is this. When you break what is sacred, you make what is common. And then, God told Moses, another 40 days, another 40 nights, come back into my presence. And my final point is this. I only have two slides. God wants to train all of us to have silence in the noise. We need to train our minds, our bodies, our beings, our souls, our spirits to have silence in the noise. Because you're going to ask me, Pastor, you're telling me that we should, it's either or? I must have all God and shun all of this? I said, no, 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 no. God calls us to be in the world, not of the world. So these are necessary for us to live. If you have no money, no talk, all right? We need to feed our families, right? No work, no money, right? No money, no fashion, right? So on and so forth. No money, no food. We need this. But where is your worship and where is your priority is my question. Is it this or is it this? Is it Mount Sinai or is it the camp? 
which is your priority. And God is saying, we need to learn the art. We need to learn the discipline. We need to learn the lifestyle of being silent in the noise. To give our time, our space, our alignment to be silent in the noise. Why? Why did God say, Moses, you do another 40 days, 40, 40, 40 days fast and pray? Why did God say, Moses, you come back into my presence? Because Israel rebelled. You semi rebelled by throwing the tablets. All of you are unworthy in the sight of God. The silence in noise allows you to do three things. Number one, God will rebuild you, rebuild you in his presence. God will always rebuild redeem you in his presence. You know, I've got a lot of noise in my life. I've got, tr trust me, I've got a lot of noise. But I, say, I don't use noise in a bad way. I've got a lot of things to do. I've got list, decisions to make, decisions ranging from changing a diaper all the way to what, you know, work decisions. I've got a lot of things. And God has recently, since, since the long riot break, says, Isaac, you need to learn how to be silent in the noise. And you need to learn how to decipher which is noise that is more important and which is noise that is less important. You gotta be silent in the noise. Why? Because when we are silent before God, God can then start to rebuild and redeem your life. It's only in His presence. Where else can God rebuild you? Where else can God redeem you? Where else can God says, hey, you wanna shift your focus from here to here? You wanna shift your priorities from here to here? Where else but in His presence? to be silent before God. You know, we, sometimes we as Christians, if we're Christians for a long time, we can't even be silent before God because we want to quote scriptures, we want to pray, we want to ask for things, we want to do so, we want to worship. Now, all these are good, but there will always come a time where we need to be silent before Him and says, God, here I am. Speak, for your servant is listening. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? Where do I need to go? What do I need to do? Whom do I need to speak? What do I need to say? God, your servant is listening. And Moses did it. He spent 40 days. Now, I'm not asking you to spend 40 days in silence. But Moses did. He spent 40 days in the presence of God, and God rebuilt him. And through Moses, God rebuilt the Israelites. You see, when Moses threw the tablets, he broke that is sacred. And God was ready to kill everyone. But what was the plea of Moses to God? What was the plea of Moses? Moses says, God, don't. We are a stubborn people. We are a rebellious people. But if you kill us now, you will make us common. You will make all the Israelites common because all the other gods in the world will be ready to sacrifice human life in order to get what that God, small g, wants. But God, you are not that kind of God. You are a God who is slow to anger. You are a God who is abounding in love. You are a God who is merciful. You are a God who is gracious. Give us a chance, we will do it again. Give us a chance because we bow before you. Give us a chance. And Moses pleaded before God. And in that silence and in that presence, God says, I will rebuild you and I will rebuild the whole nation of Israel. What did God ask Moses to do in the first process of rebuilding? God says, Moses, you chisel out two stone tablets and you make an ark. You chisel out two stone tablets and you make an ark. In the presence of God, God will always chisel out and carve out parts of our life. Chisel out parts that is ungodly. Chisel out parts that is a distraction. Chisel out parts that is unworthy. Chisel out parts that distract us from the will of God. He will always chisel out. Now, that process is going to take time. That process it may hurt, but that process will always yield a result in the long run. And God is asking every single one of us this morning, are you willing to submit yourself to the presence of God for Him to chisel your life? for Him to carve out the ark in your life. 
You see, when we fast forward into the New Testament, we all know that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't we? That the Holy Spirit resides within us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But how many of you have ever stopped to ask that every temple needs to have a properly cut stone in place? Every temple needs a foundation. Every temple needs a perfect measurement of this, this column goes here, this column goes here, this is where I want to do this, this is where I want to sacrifice, this is where I want to worship, this is where the people comes in, this is where I host people, this is where I go to church, blah, 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 blah. Everybody knows that you want to build a building, you need architecture, you need engineering. So if we are the temple of God, and in this story, God is saying, you need to chisel out what that is not God. You need to chisel out what that is common so that he can reintroduce what that is sacred. See, when Moses chiseled out the two tablets, God then says, now you're ready to contain my laws, my holy laws within you. Once you have tell, told God that I am ready, God, for, for you to work in my life, to tell me what, where I, I have gone wrong, to tell me what I should do next. Tell me, God, because I want to honor you. I want to follow you all my days of my life because I know at the end of the road, what did, what did the ending of the text say? If you fear him, you love him, you serve him, you obey him, it is for our own good. God is not doing it for his good. With or without you, God is good. God is sovereign. God is big. God is timeless. With or without you, God is still on the throne. With or without you, God will still die on that cross. What we do, we love, we serve, we obey. We chisel out our lives. For who's good? For our good. But pastor, it's, it takes so much effort to come early to church. But for who's good? Our good. But pastor, it's so difficult to, to read my Bible and pray. But for who's good? for our good. You know, when we chisel out our life and we say, God, my life now contains your holiness in it. It's within me. Then and then only, if the Bible is together with me and I'm holding it wherever I go and everything I see is through the lens of the Word of God and everything I see is through the lens of prayer, my relationship with Him, then God says that I can give you all these things and you will know how to steward it well. I can give you all these things and you will know how to bless people your riches will be a blessing to people. But if you don't have the Word of God, your riches will corrupt you. Your riches will corrupt me. But if you have the Word of God, your riches, oh, I don't know, all the Cadbury chocolate in the world will be used to bless people, right? All the fashion in the world will be used, you know, to open Could I Bless all over Klein Valley, right? All the, all the work in the world will be used to, you know, I don't know, bless uh, 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 foreign workers, Bless those who, who, are, who, who just came out of prison. Bless those drug rehabs. You hire them in your business and says, God wants to be a blessing to you. Even though the society may reject you, but we as Christians, we believe that you are included in the divine uh, order of Jesus Christ. Social media will be a blessing. You are no longer influenced by your friends because you know who you are. You no, long, no longer need to ask social media. You no longer need to ask your friends, who am I? Please like my picture. Please send me a heart. Please send me a thumbs up, all right? Please, please comment that I am pretty in this picture or I look good, right? Please, please tell me that my holiday was worth it even though I overspent on my credit. Please tell me that I'm approved by society. You no longer need it. You post it because, I don't know, you want to be a blessing. You say, I am loved, forever loved. I am yours, forever yours, Jesus Christ. Nothing in this world will satisfy me. Only the Word of God. And that is the process of chiseling our life as a template, a canvas before God. It says, God, I'm the temple. What do you need me to chisel? My mind, I'll chisel it. My heart, I'll chisel it. My time, I'll chisel it. My attitude, I'll chisel it. So that I can be a canvas before God. It says, God, in my last point, my first point, God rebuilds you in his presence. Second point, we chisel out our lives to contain his presence. And our third point, we consecrate our hearts to shape his presence. 
we consecrate our lives, when we are a canvas before God, a blank canvas, God says, now I can chisel my commandments and my laws into each and every one of your heart so that you know, and you know, and you know, without a shadow of a doubt, to whom you belong. To whom? Now, God could chisel out so many things, but this morning, I just want to be true to text. He's chiseling out one thing. If you forget everything, you remember one thing that God is consecrating in all our lives, the fear of God. The fear of God. Many of us, could it be that many of us, we have lost that fear of God? We don't revere Him enough. We don't make Him important enough. He is a side piece. He is a good to have. He is a convenient to have. He is a slot machine. But we don't fear Him to say, God, I don't want to break that it is sacred. God, when I, when I worship, when I prioritize each and every one of these things, I have broken that which is sacred within me. I fear I no longer have you, your truth within me because I've broken that which is sacred and I've allowed everything else to come in, everything else. And then we find that we become exactly like the Israelites. We're impatient for the things of God. We're grumbling and we're complaining all the time, right? Where our attitude stings all the time. We want what we want and we want it now. God says, no, no, my church, my brothers, my sisters, and God says, my sons and my daughters, we need to come back to the heart of God and say, God, chisel your commandments into my life. How do I honor you this morning? How do I align my life back unto you this morning? How do I say, God, you are everything to me, everything, and I would give up. What do you need me to give up to chase the heart of God? Because the world will fade. You want to buy crypto? One minute is up, another minute is down, but the word of God will never fade away. You want to be in a relationship? One minute you're on 7-Eleven, one minute you're arguing to your teeth comes out but only God will be the same. You want to go into fashion? Oh, next month is 1970s fashion. Next month is modern fashion. Next month is, I don't know, the fashion. It changes every single month to what all the fashion industry will tell you what is fashionable. But the Word of God is always fashionable in your life. You want to go to work? Work is good. Work is necessary, but work will never fulfill you. There will always be work. Work will never ever say, you are now arrived in your identity as a worker. But the Word of God will tell you that. You have arrived in your identity as a son. You want to put your children first? You want to put food first? You want to put money first? All these things will fade away. Fade away. And the only thing that will remain is when you are on Mount Sinai. You and God. And God alone. And in that presence of God, you say, God, rebuild my life. Chisel out this temple and consecrate my heart so that I would follow you valley high, valley low, mountain high, mountain low. I would follow you all the difficult days of my life in sickness and in health. I would follow you in riches and in poor. I would follow you in good times and in bad. I will follow you. So I'm gonna, I wanna do a short exercise. No going in, no going out, unless you really have to. I want us to have two minutes of absolute silence. At the start, there will be absolute silence in this place. The children may cry, your phone may vibrate, try to tune out those noise. 
And I want us all to be silent before God. And I want you to think, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? That is the noise trying to distract you. What is the second thing that comes to your heart? That is the noise trying to capture your attention. Are you, are you, are you in your silence asking God 10,000 questions? God, when am I going to be blessed? When am I going to have this? When am I going to get a girlfriend? When am I going to get married? When am I... That is also the noise distracting you from hearing from God. And I want us all, as I be care, on site, when I beg you online as well, they will be absolutely silent for two minutes. Where's my, where's my timer? And let us be silent before God and train ourselves to be in His presence. No distractions. We're early today. Your children will be fine. I say, God, here I am. Here I bow to lift you high. God, here and now, here I am. Two minutes starting now. For some of us, it may have been a very long two minutes. We're not used to it. Two minutes could seem like eternity being before God. But some of us, you've been practicing it, two minutes is a short, short amount of time. But today, we're going to end this way. I want us all to come back to the heart of worship. All. We need to align, every single one of us, we need to align our lives back to the priority to the only thing, the main thing, the main thing that is on Mount Sinai, we say, God, I want to be in your presence because your presence is the only thing that matters to me. Your presence would lead me in the direction. I don't, I don't care what the stock markets are saying. I don't care what the work is saying. I don't care what all the noise of the world is telling me. But if I am in your presence, I know you will lead me in the right way. You will lead me in the right way. And my emotions wouldn't go up and down. My thought processes wouldn't go up and down. Lord Jesus Christ, all I need to be is to rebuild and to redeem my life in your presence. In your presence. So I want to just invite everybody to a moment of worship. And in that moment of worship, nobody's going to pray for you up front. But I want to open up the altar on level 5. And up there, if you can't come down to level 5, come towards the railing. That could be an altar. For some of you, you may not be able to walk up front. Your seats can be the altar. But we're going to have a time of worship. And I want you to imagine that there are two mountains before you. Sinai or the camp. And we're going to have to align and says, God, I only want to be on Sinai. 
I want, only want your presence, nothing else. Forgive me, Father God, if I've made everything else a priority. Forgive me if I've been grumbling and arguing. Forgive me if I've been making work my whole life. Forgive me, Father God. I just want to come back into your presence, presence and that's all that matters to me right now. So when we're going to start our week by being in the presence of God. I'm going to start singing and in that short verse, the altar is open and I invite every single one of you, you can kneel at the altar, you could stand and raise your hands, you could do anything you want. This will be in the next five minutes, will just be a time of worship that says, God, here I am. Here I am, chisel in me your 10 commandments and chisel in me and consecrate my life back unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Can I invite everybody to stand? Oh, open so if you want to come on forward to worship you may come on forward and worship hallelujah thank you Jesus Father God we give our lives back onto you thank you Jesus how great the love how strong the hand that holds us beautiful so beautiful so here I bow here I bow to lift you high, Jesus, be glorified in all things, for all my life I am yours forever. Yes, you did. How great a love carries us to kindness. Wonderful, so wonderful. So here I bow to lift you high, Jesus. Be
Here I bow. So here I bow to lift you up, Jesus, be glorified in all things for all. very well hallelujah thank you Jesus oh, we come before you in absolute worship to the king who deserves it all to the king who is worth it all to the king and we lift you up we lift you up, we lift you up, God. Above all the noise, the noise of the world. For I want to hear the sound of victory. I want to hear the sound of presence. I want to hear the sound of Jesus. I want to hear the sound of the Holy Spirit. I want to hear the sound of the Lord my God. I want to hear the still small voice, the still small voice of God. Speak to me, speak to me. Speak to me, speak to me, for I am here, your servant is listening, your servant is listening, speak to me, speak to me, thank you God, oh I love you Lord, and when the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood, and I will be still and know you are God. And when the oceans rise and thunders roar, and I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the blood, and I will be still and know you are God. you are God, and I will be still, and know you are God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lord God, this whole week, teach us, Father God, to be silent in the noise. Teach us, Father God, the discipline of Father God, to be able to hear the voice of God to silence the noise and empower the voice. Teach us, Father God, to silence the noise and empower the voice, the only one voice that matters, the voice of God, the voice of the Lord Almighty. So Father God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that we as a church, we will consecrate our lives and our hearts before you and say the only one God that matters is the God, capital G, in our lives. The God who holds time in His hands. The God who holds all the plans of the world in His hands. The God who holds my life in His hands. So I thank You, Lord Jesus Christ, that You are a God who forgives. You are a God who redeems. You are a God who restores. And You are a God who wants us to be in Your presence. Separate us now, Father God, with Your love, May your face shine upon us, Father God. May the fellowship, the Holy Spirit, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the love of our Father be with us all the days of our lives. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we all say, 
Amen. Thank you, church, on site and online. It's a blessing to have you here in SIBKL service. If you do need prayer, there is a link in our chat group. Go into our prayer room and there you will find our prayer leaders to pray for you. Anybody on site, if you do need prayers, our pastors will be here up front to pray for you. God bless you, church. Have a great week ahead of you. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you. So we invite you to connect with us. God bless. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others.
Creator God, the beginning and the end. The giver of my life, the author, finisher. Lord, you made me for a good and perfect pleasing will. My life's like a vessel you have filled. Of peace. The Savior 